morning. Welcome to Pine Grove General Baptist Church. Uh, here it is, the uh, very first Sunday of the new year, and uh, I want to welcome you here. I tell you that we're glad you're here and that you've chosen to join with us this morning. Either you're here or on the internet in one of our platforms, we're just really thrilled that you're with us and, uh, and want you to feel welcome. Please join me in prayer on this wonderful morning that the Lord has given us. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, Lord, and we just have so few words to be able to express how wonderful you are. You're worthy of all the praise that we can give you and all the thanks that we can give you, the creator of the universe, the creator of all things. Your majesty is just beyond our mind to be able to grasp. And Lord, so there, we just do the best that we can, Lord, and we offer up our praise and thank you. Lord, you tell us to come to you in prayer, and Lord, we do this morning, and we lift up the sick around us, those who are sick in body, mind, and soul, Lord, and we know that you have the cure. We, you have the cure, Lord, for you're, you're the great healer. And Lord, we ask that you heal those who, who, who come to you, Lord, but so that others will know that you are God. Lord, but healing is so, so important, Lord. And you're the only one who can. And Lord, that, that includes healing our nation. So we pray for our leaders that they'll come to you for the, the healing that they need in order to bring about the correct choices that they should make from wisdom brought from you. And Lord, we just ask you to heal our nation, to heal, heal our people. Lord, break out of, help us to break out of the revival that they would know that you are God, that you are, you are in charge. Lord, for we know that you are, but the world does not recognize it. And they they rebel against you, Lord, we know. Lord, we pray for those around us who've lost loved ones, who've lost hope, who've lost all the, the things that, that they once sought. But, Lord, you, you have the, the comfort for that. You have the cure for that as well, Lord, and we know it. And we ask you and bring that, bring that forward to you this morning, Lord. That the whole world will know that you are God. That you are God. And Lord, again, we thank you. We praise you. We thank you for the answer to our prayers. For we know that our prayers don't go up and be unanswered. That they are answered. If we understand or not. But we ask you that you'll be with me this morning. Help me to say the things that you would have me to say. In Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. So, again, this morning, Christ died on the cross and arose on the third day to pay the sin debt for all mankind. Some people don't want you to know that. Satan certainly doesn't want you to know that. And so those who were influenced by him don't want you to know. But he did. He did it. And they did it freely so that all men could have the opportunity to lead their life of sin and rebellion, that life that will lead to nothing but destruction, eternal destruction. He did that so that we could come to know God and enter eternal life through Him, through Jesus. John chapter 15, verse 5, a little different this morning, but I want to read you this. It says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. How true that is. And when we forget to include him, we can't even spread the simple message. The gospel message is what's important. The gospel from our Father. And to let all people know that it applies to everyone, no matter who you are, what you've done. 
doesn't matter about what church you go to. It doesn't matter about who the preacher is. It only matters about Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. That's the gospel message. That he came to die on a cross so that we could have eternal life. It's a wonderful message. It's the, the only message of hope that there is in the entire world for the human race. For when you breathe your last, it's all over. And if you haven't come to know Christ and to follow Christ, it's all over. Well, last Sunday, we said that what is past is gone. And learn from it, but let it go. Basically, that's what the message was about. So we didn't dwell on those things that we've learned before. We're leaving them, letting them go. And so this morning, well, last week we also agreed that the thing that for the next year for us to do is to grow closer to God. Ever closer to God. So on this, the first Sunday of a new year, I want to say that what is ahead can be bright and more wonderful each day when we follow our Lord and Savior. The world doesn't want us to know that either. The world wants us to think about the past and the things that have happened wrong. But no, the way for the future and the year ahead to be bright is to follow our Lord and Savior. So in this new year, let us strive to do all we can to grow stronger in our faith. And we have some directions on how we can do that, some of the ways we can. And last week we talked about being in our Bible, study our Bible, study constantly, and be in prayer. And then the results of studying our Bible and being in prayer should be that some things that we can these aren't going to bring about salvation, but they're going to help bring us a closer and stronger and a brighter future. The only thing that brings salvation is not our works. It's what Christ has done. So don't get that idea. But the results of that should be that we should want to grow stronger in our faith and grow closer to Christ. So some things the Bible says that we should do in order to do that is like to lay aside any and all of the things which have retarded our progress. Things that we might have been carrying around with us. Well, lay them aside. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, slander of every kind. See, Peter's pointing out that though we'll never reach perfection in this life, we won't. The only perfect man was Jesus Christ. And we'll never reach that perfection in this life. But still, as we grow closer, regeneration of our life, well, that regeneration and the pursuit of sin cannot exist together. And so Peter's saying that we must strive to lay aside those listed examples. He just listed a few examples in that verse. But we should, we should strive to lay aside any of these and all the other sins that we know of or around us or in our lives. And so then, when we do, we can refill with a new life focused on God. Now, an old question is, going back to our verse in John 15, do healthy, do healthy fruits bear rotten Healthy plants, we'll put it that way, bear rotten fruit. No. So when we're healthy and we've kicked out or thrown out all those things, it shouldn't be those things that shouldn't be meant that are mentioned here in First Peter out of our life, but then we have a place to rebuild with a new life focused on God. Another thing that we should do is to lay aside any remaining lukewarmness. Lukewarmness is in, in Revelations, Christ wrote the letters to the churches, but he, he wrote to the churches, but he wrote to us too. And so in Revelation chapter 3, verse 15, it says, I know your deeds, 
that you're neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. Now, I don't know about you. We all know that I like to eat. And I don't know about you, but when a certain dish is supposed to be served hot, I want it served hot. Okay? I'm not going to complain too much, but because it's food, but I really want it to be served hot. So especially, and you know, I like to do this because when we have breakfast here at the church, I love to make sausage gravy for everybody. And I do, and I, I love it. Because I like to make it because I like to eat it. And something that's like the cream sausage gravy that we make, well, we always know that it's best when it's served when it's first made and kept hot. So, you know, it's never as good when cold. It's certainly not as good when it's reheated. And if you let it set, it tends to separate into oil and the solids, and it's not very appetizing. So listen to what Jesus had said there. See, Jesus wants us to be hot on fire for him, not lukewarm. When we want to, we're going to try to grow closer, well, we need to get rid of any remaining lukewarmness that is in our life. Also, we could lay aside, we must lay aside any remaining worldliness. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That means we don't love God if we love the world. See, love exhibits an extreme preference. That's what love is. When we love someone, we want to be with them. We want to, we want to be with them and want to spend our time with them. Well, if that's so, we'll love for anything other then God takes away time that we are to spend with Him and in His ways. Scripture tells us repeatedly that our God is a jealous God who desires His people to look to Him only. Look to Him only. And not to love the world in any way. We have to live in it. We'll live here. But be separate from it. Don't love it. It's not going to last. It's not our final home. Our final home is either with God or in hell. So why should we apply our love to this world? Apply our love only to God. We should lay aside any old and also any new sorrows. You know, we said last week, those things are past, let them go. Well, things that happen to us in our life are pretty hard but to get rid of, but we can. See, Psalm 55, verse 22 says, Cast your cares on the Lord, and He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. David got it. That's why I love to read the Psalms. And we know that yes, cares, new cares will come. And even in the most sheltered life, trials, troubles, storms, disappointments, they're going to come. No matter. It'll happen to us all. But they must be given over to God so as to help build our faith. There's an old saying, and it says, and I, I think I've given this before, but it's a really great illustration. When those kind of things come. This old saying says, a piece of wax and a piece of clay can be placed at an equal distance from a flame. One will be melted and the other hardened. See, it depends on our response to those things that come to us in our life. And our response as Christians must have only a one outcome. That we must place our trust in God in all things. 
and not worry, cast, not worry about our sorrows, our new, our new troubles, but cast our cares on the Lord. Going back to First Peter, chapter two. I want to read the rest, I guess, for the next uh, six verses or so. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2 says, Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. Now that you have tasted that the Lord is good, as you come to him, the living stone, rejected by human, but chosen by God, and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. God loves us. He truly does. But like any good father, he wants us to grow into healthy spiritual adults. Now, I've experienced enough life in my 70 years to know the change for the better doesn't come as quickly as we might hope for. And that lasting beneficial change has come even slower. But unless that type of change is wanted, it comes not at all. See, it's easier to fall than to climb. You know why? Because falling takes no talent or effort. So that kind of change comes when we let go of the focus on our goal. Well, as Christians, our goal is to allow God to change us without resisting, allow him to change us and to build us into what he would have us to be. A quote for this morning, a summarized Bible puts it this way. The word of God is the proper and necessary food for the soul, which, if rightly used, does not leave a man as it finds him, but improves him causing him to realize his spiritual position in the world, the duty of patient and Christ-like submission, and the necessity of purging out those things from the life which are contrary to Christ. So this morning, lay aside the things that should not be a part of our life. Purge them out. It'll take constant work. It'll take constant prayer. It'll take constant study. And we'll never reach perfection. But that doesn't mean that we can't try. And by trying, increase our faith in growing closer and closer to our Savior. So again, this morning, if you're listening and know that you've allowed your focus on our awesome and powerful God to slip. And that you're not putting your entire trust in Jesus and are going your own way. And maybe you've never even considered making Jesus the complete Lord of your life. Well, why not start the new year outright? Now is the time to seek Jesus. Now is the time to ask him into your life as Lord. You can do that in a simple prayer just by asking him into your life. Telling him you repent, you're willing to let him shape your life. Confess him to other people. Give your life totally over to him. And if you do that this morning, Go find a Bible-believing, teaching church near you if you're not here, near us. If you've had a church and you're out, get back in it. That's where you need to be. Or if you're looking for a new one, 
combine them. And again, if you're here in this area and you'd like to come attend and worship with us, we're Pine Grove General Baptist Church. We're located at 102 Silver Tree Road in Shirley, Arkansas. And we would love to have you here. We would love to see you. Heavenly Father, thank you once again, Lord, for the opportunity to speak we encourage people to come to you, Lord. Lord, we just know the time is short in anyone's life. And we just pray that your word goes out. And we know that it will go out. It never goes out without coming back with our profit. Your word, Lord, is precious. Lord, your Son, and what you've done for us, your love for us, is the most precious. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Be with us, Lord, please, and keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, go out somewhere to somewhere, some person today or this week or in the next few minutes, tell them that God loves them. Even though that person knows it, tell them. Tell yourself, God loves you. Have a great day.